Welcome to Demystify Math. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing the angles between vectors, parallel, and perpendicular vectors. Let's start by finding the angle between the two vectors shown here. We have the vector 2, 5, and the vector 3, negative 1. We already know how to find the angle between the x-axis and the vector. So let's go ahead and use our tangent function to find the angle of theta. The tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, so that's going to be 5 over 2. Using our arctan or our inverse tan function on our calculator, we get angle theta is about 68.2 degrees. Let's now do the same thing for angle alpha. The tangent of alpha is equal to negative 1 over 3, so alpha is approximately 18.4, negative 18.4. Now, since one of our angles is negative, we're going to subtract the two angles. And when we do that, we get about 86.6 .6 degrees for the angle between the two vectors. We have another way of finding the angle between the vectors, and it's a formula derived from the law of cosines. We have the cosine of angle beta, which is the angle between the two vectors, is equal to the dot product of the two vectors, divided by the product of the magnitudes of the two vectors. Let's go ahead and find the dot product of our two vectors. So we're going to multiply our x coordinates together and our y coordinates together and then add those. And we get 1 for this problem. Then we're going to find the magnitude of the two vectors. So let's start with vector u. Using our distance formula, we have the magnitude of vector u is the square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared, or the square root of 29. Doing the same thing for the other vector, we end up with the square root of 10. Now let's go back and plug into our cosine beta formula. The dot product is 1, the magnitudes are square root of 29 and square root of 10. So we end up with 1 over the square root of 290. Now, isolating b, we're going to take the arc cosine, or the inverse cosine function, of 1 over the square root of 290, and we get the 86.6 .6 that we found earlier. So now you can see that this formula works. So let's put it to some use. We want to find two vectors that are parallel. If they are parallel, then the angle between them is either, either 0 or 180, or in other words, the two vectors coincide. Remember that we're only working with vectors here that are in their component form. So their um, starting point is at the origin 0, 0. All right, so if the angle between the two vectors is 0 or 180, then the cosine of the, aid of the angle must be 1 or negative 1. So all we have to do is show that this cosine of beta formula that we have is going to be negative 1 or 1 to show that the two vectors are parallel. So let's look at these two examples, this one example, where we have vector u, which is at 3i minus 4j, and vector v, which is at negative 3i plus 4j. So plugging into our cosine of beta formula, we're first going to find the dot product of the two vectors and divide it by the magnitude of the two vectors. Well, both vectors have a magnitude of 5, so we ended up with 25 in the denominator. Figuring our dot product, we got negative 25. So our ratio is negative 1. Since the cosine of beta is equal to negative 1, the angle must be 180 degrees between the two vectors, which means that they're parallel. Let's go ahead and put our two vectors on uh, the coordinate plane and verify this. So you can see that the two vectors form a straight line and that the angle between them is 180 degrees. We can also find vectors that are parallel to the vector by doing any scalar multiple of the vector. Any scalar multiple will coincide with the vector, and it will run in the same direction unless you're multiplying by a negative scalar. And it will have an angle of 0 if it's a positive scalar between the two vectors. Let's look at this example we took one half of vector u to get vector w. So that gave us the coordinates 3 halves and negative 2. Notice that it is right on the line 3, negative 4, and that the angle between the two vectors is 0. 
looking at our cosine of beta formula and plugging in with using vector w and vector u, we get a 1. So if the cosine of the angle is equal to 1, then the angle must be 0. So these two are parallel. Again, anything that has an angle of 0 between the vectors, or 180 between the vectors, is considered to be parallel. Okay, let's uh, discuss perpendicular vectors for a minute. You know um, that they're going to have an angle between them of 90 degrees if they're perpendicular, which means the cosine of the angle must be 0. If the cosine of the angle is equal to 0, that's only going to happen when our numerator is equal to 0 or where the dot product is equal to 0. So that simplifies our formula down quite a bit when we're looking at perpendicular vectors. You already know that the product of the slopes of the vectors is equal to negative 1. So that makes it really easy for us to find another vector that's perpendicular to the one we have. We just need an opposite reciprocal slope. Or in other words, all we have to do is exchange x for y, and then we need to make sure that the signs are going to be um, opposites. So looking at this vector for 3, it has a slope that's the opposite sign of 3, negative 4. So it would be perpendicular to vector u. Looking at the dot product, you can verify or prove that the two vectors are perpendicular because the dot product is equal to 0, which means that the, co the cosine of the angle is 0, so the angle must be 90. Actually, any vector that coincides with the vector we just found will also be perpendicular to vector u. So let's use that information to help us find a vector that's perpendicular to u and has a length of 3. Since it must coincide with vector p, it must be a scalar multiple of vector p. Let's start by finding our unit vector. Remember, the unit vector is one that corresponds with the vector that we're looking at, which is vector p in this case, but has a length of 1. So vector p has a length of 5. So all we have to do to find the unit vector is divide our coordinates by 5. Then we're going to multiply the unit vector by 3 to get a length of 3, or a magnitude of 3. And we get the vector 12 fifths comma negative 9 fifths. And again, you can see that that coincides with vector p and is perpendicular to vector u. You can verify the length of the new vector that we just found by using your distance formula. You can verify that the new vector and vector u are perpendicular by looking at their dot product. Thank you for tuning in.